Welcome to Morocco. We are going to be spending the next couple of weeks exploring everything from the bustling souks and vibrant medinas to the majestic Sahara Desert. We can't wait to dive into the sights, sounds, tastes, and incredible hospitality of this North African gem. It all starts as we touch down in Casablanca and hurry to catch our very first Moroccan train. Number one. Thank you. One minute! We made it on board our train just in time. We had like two minutes to run here and get here. Found some seats. Here we go. We just got off our first stop, and a lady's helping us find our next train. Train number two. And she's in our train car too, so I'm just sticking with our local. <laughs> what an amazing train ride. I met two very sweet locals. Oh my gosh, can't tell you how great they were. We're just gonna head to our place now. Checked in, we have some tea. For Morocco adventures, huh? Yes. To the start of Morocco. We just checked in our cute little Riyadh. Now we're walking on the street looking for some food. I love the vibe here. Super busy, tons of street food stalls. I'm pretty excited to find something. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you, man. <laughs> Lemon? Please. Yeah. Ginger, you want Yeah, sounds good. Oh man, awesome. Thanks. Thank you, brother. So I got this whole glass for only 50 cents. So it's sugar cane, ginger, and lime. He puts it in the machine, it comes straight out. It looks so fresh and good. Wow, that's so refreshing. I don't think we've had one of these with ginger ever, have we? Oh. This is so good. It's a spot, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, the ginger. After that it's like heavy on the ginger. After the long travel day, this is it. Yeah, so good. Thank you, brother. Nice to meet you. Where did you buy that? Is that right? Uh, this guy. You want to? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get one. This guy. Okay, thank you, my man. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we just ordered this sandwich. Everybody's eating them. They're selling them all over the streets. It's chicken, egg, and cheese. Want to buy? It smells so good. <laughs> they look so good. Mm. Hey. Alright, what's the burden? It's really good. I like the pico one. It's super fresh. It reminds me of like a breakfast sandwich. Delicious first meal. Both those sandwiches were only $3.50. Can't beat that for that delicious burger, what I call it. I'm not sure. Let me know. It's a triple layered cake with cream and chocolate and gooey stuff and it's light. It's, oh, it's, light it's really too? tasty. I'm gonna have another bite because <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Perfect. I asked the guy's favorite and he pointed out this one like three times, so. Okay. <laughs> Zebra cake. This one had caught my eye at the other guy's stand. What's in the middle? Mm. This is good. Really good. You know what kind is it? It's got cream, uh -huh. cinnamon, uh -huh. Ooh, cinnamon, frosting. <laughs> it's like confectioner sugar on top with wafer cakes and cinnamon mousse. Ooh, wafer cakes too? Oh, that sounds great. Oh my gosh, that last one with the wafer and the cinnamon. It was like a cinnamon roll, but with wafers, it's crispy. Seriously, so amazing. Love that dessert. <laughs> Love 
Fine, good. Oh, we're good. You? Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. We're good? Alhamdulillah. Working hard or? Alhamdulillah. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's small. <laughs> good to Thank see you, you, man. What an amazing first night here in Morocco. The locals were so friendly and helpful. The food was so delicious and the desserts, oh, so great. So exciting. This is only our first night here. Can't wait to show you guys more of the town tomorrow. You're a cutie, huh? He's such a sweet one, huh? You're the sweet dog. He had a good dog. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you got some new friends. <laughs> So we're just walking down the main street and we saw a bunch of locals. So we're getting some coffee with milk. Start our day. It's our first coffee here in Morocco. Perfect. Thank you. How much do you think these are? A dollar. I bet you're right. Oh, a little hot, huh? First coffee. First of many. Coffee here is delicious. It really hits the spot. It has like a cocoa flavor to it. And it serves super hot, which is what we love. Cheers. I wasn't sure what to expect with the coffee, but I am pleasantly surprised. It is so delicious. A lot of French influence here. I believe the coffees are just over a dollar, so pretty great deal. Gonna be having a lot of those this trip. Look how delicious these look. Wow, that looks so good. I wonder how much they are. Hey, that's a cool shot. Yeah, the baguettes look good, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah. And the delivery vehicle was amazing. <laughs> that's, even, that's even cooler. So our host told us that breakfast is at 9 o'clock. And this is our little Riyadh. It's pretty sweet. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. We have this nice little setup here. And it's under open sky, which is really nice. I did not expect such a huge breakfast. We have fresh coffee, a fruit bowl, yogurt, hard-boiled egg. We also have crepes, croissants, and it's like some jams over there. Mm -hmm. We're here in Morocco. It is our first official day. Today, we're going to be getting a feel for Rabat, exploring the city, and seeing all of the sights. past that beautiful graveyard overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. The waves are so big today. There's a ton of surfers. We're gonna go down and check out. We are on our way to the old fort, but we got distracted by this beautiful ocean. The waves are so huge. There's so many people down at the beach hanging out. A lot of people learning how to surf, playing football, of course. It's a great setting. What a great place. I love all the fishermen fishing on one side. Beautiful views out on the pier. The wind is so wild today though. So many people out enjoying on their Sunday. So we just made it to our first stop of the day. It's the Kasba, which means fort. It sits up on this hill. It overlooks the ocean. We're going to go inside, take a look around. There's like this big, beautiful gate that we're supposed to be able to see and learn some more about the history here. into the Kaspa of Udaya now. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, it's like a little city within a city. So this is like the main fort area that like surrounds it. And then up here you can come out and see the views of the ocean. We're gonna walk through the gate and then just go check out all the little alleyways and stuff like that. Wow, this is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice because there's no wind in here. <laughs> like I went like this on my face and there's like just a line of dirt and sand. <laughs> oh well. I'm 
Tommy's doing over there. Tommy, what are you doing? A sandwich. Is it sardine? It's what? Oh, sardines. Sardina. Yeah, sardines. Potatoes. Potatoes. Salad Moroccan. Uh huh. Salad Moroccan. Salad uh, Corset Potatoes. Potatoes. Sus Tomat. Nice, man. Looks good. This? Yeah, please. Yeah. Oh, yum. So are the sardines fresh? Uh, fresh. Are they fresh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. From the ocean, huh? Yeah. Nice. Man. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's delicious. Look at that. Wow. Maybe the sandwich here. That perfection. And thank you so much. Um, got the goods? Got the goods. Got a sandwich, a juice. Uh, wait, it's okay. We don't need a straw. We'll just drink it like this. Why are we following your chips? We're taking it to the terrace. What terrace? The terrace to eat at. I think we're following this guy. I think there's a terrace to go eat at. Look at my, look at my, the wind. <laughs> I can't, I can't escape it. So he's showing us the doubts now. Holy smokes, look at his view. Wow. This is your house, huh? Yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo, incredible, man. Wow. Cheers. 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 And the pomegranate juice is delicious. So good. Let's try the sandwich. Yes. Uh-huh. Homemade bread, too, with potatoes. Mm, that's delicious. Is it good? Mm -hmm. The onions in there are so fresh. Are mm -hmm. oh. And the potatoes, that's really good. <laughs> Thank you. These vegetables and onions are so amazing. The sardine gets it that kick of salt. They're all fresh from the ocean out here. Oh, this is so good. Hi, mm. Hey, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Well, that was a super pleasant surprise. The guy invited me into his shop, showed me what he was cooking and making, made me up a sandwich, and kind of refused to let me pay for it. So sweet. Then he took us to his house. We saw him at his family real quick, and he showed me his terrace view overlooking the ocean. What a beautiful spot and a beautiful family. People here are so great. You guys are a little comfy. You got a coffee? The main gate. <laughs> You're not strong enough, huh? Look at this crazy dust storm. The city looks different now, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, everything's like starting to turn like brown and it, the weather shows like high winds all day. But we only have today, 24 hours in Rabat, so we're gonna make the most of it. Thank you. We're heading down to Console Street, which is supposed to be like one of the oldest, most famous streets in the city. It's like where you can buy like leather goods, carpets, all the things. Okay. So yeah, hopefully, you know, we're just gonna roll with the wind. So that's where we're headed now. <laughs> what do you guys think of the market? You know, there's some artists, the paintings were just beautiful. Yeah. I love the paintings. It's beautiful. The buildings, the colors, the way people dress, and the vendors are very chill. There's nobody pressuring you. That's true. Um, it's it's delightful, really, to walk through. I'm in the market for some t-shirts because all I have is a bunch of tank tops and a little risque for right now. So. <laughs> Your mom has a good eye. She was like, how about a cow for dinner? <laughs> we're like, oh. I don't think today. Look how cute this is. Oh, that suits you. Oh. Bonita. There's a bunch of places up here that have fish, but I think there's a place that has a table to sit, and I see them frying up all the goods, so sounds good. Fried fish, don't tell me twice. We've been here. 
What's your name, man? Mohsin. Mohsin, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Enjoy yourself, man. Thank you. He gave us a sample of deep fried fish. Oh, good. Yeah, it's very tender and very tasty. We have some beans and lentils you just served with some bread. That's fun. So they just brought some zucchinis, looks like two different types of peppers. And I wonder what this is. Oh, let, me, let me bite into it. Mm. Potato zucchini. Wow, look at all this food. He brought us so much food. We got this big, beautiful plate of seafood. It looks so good. I want to have another bite of the fish that he let us try. Oh my gosh, look at that. It just looks so good. That is so light and flaky and with the lemon on top, it's really good. So this fish is super tender and amazing. I love that you eat it right off the bone. Wow, all this seafood is super fresh, even the little shrimps. Wow. Wow. What did you say? It's all really good, but my favorite is this fish that he gave us a sample of right from the start. It's meaty, it's got great flavor, and that lemon on there, oh. I love the fish. It's so good. And I also love all the side dishes. Honestly, the lentils and beans is right up my alley. I love that stuff. Another thing I love about the restaurant is there are no utensils served, so you have to use your hands, which is ideal for me. This fish is so amazing. Wow. Oh, so good. Oh, so amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Such an amazing lunch. It was $11 per plate. They came with the bread, the tea, the lentils, all the vegetables. Yeah, it was a lot of food, but I still feel like we got a little bit of the tourist tax. They were talking for a while before they gave us the price, so, but we're not gonna complain. 11 bucks a person, like, big deal. That's how it goes, but the, the waiter was so excellent, too. Such a great meal. Yeah, we have a couple more spots here, and then that'll be our day here in Rabat because it is already, like, late afternoon. We've just been taking our time through all of this, which has been so fun. Nice video, guys. <laughs> Hermano! So what is this place, Danny? This is Hassan Tower. It's one of the most iconic tourist sites here in Rabat. We're gonna walk around the other way and see if we can get inside. Anyway, this was supposed to be the tallest minaret for a mosque in the world, but the guy who commissioned it once he passed away, like all of the construction stopped. And so now it's just a halfway built tower, but it's still like absolutely massive. Perfect, my man. Awesome, man. Thank you, thank you. We just had to walk all the way around. So we have the Hassan Tower. I believe all of these pillars are like the unfinished mosque. And then this right here is the mausoleum. I want to Google and make sure I know for sure what this is. But yeah, we're, we're in the, the last side of the day, people. Windy and dirty it is today. I went to wipe my face. Wait, wait, let me move my hair so you can see it. Oh my gosh, you don't even need to get close, you can just see it. Looks like you were in a campfire or something. I know, but that's everybody. Everybody's still enjoying their day and going about. I mean, it's just dirt, right? Yeah, and check out how beautiful this sky is. Oh, what an awesome first full day here in Morocco. I was pleasantly surprised. I wasn't expecting a ton out of this city, but 
Isn't that great? The culture yeah. here, the people, oh my gosh, we're on a different level. They were super friendly. Yeah, it's so great. You were already complaining to your mom. Why didn't we book more days here? I, it's, it's true. It is worth more than 24 hours. What an awesome first day in Morocco. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate all you guys. See you guys in the next one. Morning from Fez. We just arrived here yesterday by train from Rabat. It cost us 140 dirham a person, but we did do first class. Second class was only 70 dirham a person. The train ride was a little under three hours and we got to see all of the beautiful Moroccan countryside. We checked into our Riyadh, which is a traditional Moroccan house. It has like a big open courtyard. And the best part is they serve you this amazing, delicious breakfast with so much food in the morning. The best. The best. It was only $52 a night which I think is a really, really good deal. And we're staying right inside of the Medina. We're currently on top of our terrace. Look at this beautiful view. Oh Overlooks my. the entire Medina. It's so nice up here. And today is so fresh. Just to have like cool 65 degree weather is just mm, so nice. Everybody stay together. If you need a bathroom, just let me know. I'll find this one. I'm the tour guide for the day. <laughs> you should also have toilet tissue for us. Yes, I brought toilet <laughs> tissue in the in the in the backpack. I have water, I have toothbrushes, I have wipes, whatever you need, band-aids. Right. I've got us covered for the day. All right. <laughs> All right, gather around people. We're starting our day here at the Blue Gate. It was built in the 12th century and it's one of the main entrances into the Medina. One of 15 entrances, right? One of 15 entrances, but this is the main one. So today we're exploring the Medina, which is the old city here in Fez. It has hundreds of little alleyways, over 9,000 shops and stalls, and it's the oldest and largest Medina in the entire world. <laughs> What a start. Live music. You saw a couple of donkeys walking through. Great energy in here so far. Look at the cats. Look at the ones sitting. They're all waiting in order. For the meat thing. Look, they're sleeping chickens. Oh, they're sleeping. I like how they're hiding. Hey, super fun start, right? It's it's so fun. The smells, the colors, the people, it's like so stimulating and it just there's so much to look at. It's fun. We're like three steps in. I know. These ones are awake. They're not okay. camera shy. You're not gonna get any fresher chicken than right here. Oh wow, you're wow. right. That is so true. <laughs> He would just tell me his dad was a butcher and he took over the business. How old were you when you started? When I was in school, I go to the shop with my dad to sit next to him. Okay. And of course, every day he touch my hand, you know. To have, it's normal when I catch meat. It's not the same. This is handmade. Yes. It's not the same like in Europe, around the country, everything by machine. And here you need to be cats in it's the pieces old by way. pieces, you know. I love that though. That's that's the way it should be, right? Traditional yeah. way. Yeah. For everything in it. In Morocco, the most things important and the most interesting for other people here to know what is, it's all it's handmade. Yes. Uh, well, I appreciate your time. It was nice to meet you. What was your name? Ahmed. Ahmed. I am A-B. Okay. You? Ahmed. It's Tommy. Tommy. Okay. You heard about the watch o'clock? I think so. It's this way? No, you have to stop there. Oh, okay. He's a pro. Watch him. Hello. This is the first water clock in the 14th century. Oh, okay. Hydro clocks. Oh. Okay. And it is 12 windows. 12 windows, it means 12 hours. One window, it means one o'clock. 
A man took over my tour guide duties for a minute and he explained the ancient powered water clock and took some time to show us around his corner of the Medina. Oh man, thank you for your time. It was so nice to meet you. The detail in the design of everything, the wood, the tile, the stone, it's just incredible. Can you imagine the time it took to create this? This is the only religious site in all Morocco that non-Muslims can enter. You cannot enter the prayer room, but you get to come inside this beautiful structure. Beautiful purse, leather purse. He like burned it and like it didn't burn and he's like leather, like waterproof, fireproof. I don't know. Fireproof. How yeah. much did it cost? It was twenty-six dollars. What did it start at for the bargain? Three hundred. Wow, you guys are quite the bargain. <laughs> and he gave us a free keychain to go with it. So oh, well, there you go, throwing in freebies. Yeah, because if we paid too much. Paid too much. That was super sweet. The guy invited me into his shop and played some music for me. What are you guys reading about? Uh, the street. The, just the name of the street saying how this is the longest, widest street in the Medina and then all the other streets are like smaller, more narrow and there's like some offshoots and stuff but this is like the main drag, if you will. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah, it's the argan oil. It's what? Argan oil. Argan oil, yeah, that's good. You make it fresh. This is the oil here. Oh, okay, yeah. Awesome. Thank you for the explanation. We had some skins in there hanging. Skins? Yeah, for leather, you know. <laughs> leather skins? You know, they're skins. They're going to make into leather. Right of an animal. I think so they have the, the the one guy like scraping all like the fur off of it and they're drying it to make all the leather goods. Pretty amazing. Everything's done by hand. It's pretty yeah. cool. He was just showing me this is all camel skin. Oh my. Can you hit it again? Oh, that's so cool. So it's a drum and arm work. That's so cool. We then met another local shop owner who brought us to a neighborhood of artists, one being his uncle who has been a Berber artist for over 30 years. He showed us how they create the paintings with cow and camel skins, which are dried and processed in the Medina every day. Oh, Is he the artist? Artist, my uncle. Uncle is the artist. Artist. And then those are all the paints, yes, huh? Yes, that's painting. So kind, so kind. Thank you, kind, so kind you thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Fez is known for its traditional leather industry and the tanneries offer a really fascinating glimpse into the leather production. We met a local guide who insisted on taking us through the entire tanning process which involves treating animal hides all the way to transforming them into leather. It was so cool to see the natural methods that have been passed down through generations. We just stopped into Fondue Bazaar to have a little rest. It's very stimulating going through the Medina. Everything is so great, but you need a break after a little bit, get away from the hustle and bustle. So we came in here, everybody ordered teas and coffees, some hummus for a little snack. We've just been like doing like kind of like a slow all day little walk and it's almost two o'clock and we barely seen just like the first part. So it was time for a break. <laughs> What do you think, Mom? I think it's surprising how 
difficult their labor is and how hard they work. And it makes me appreciate when I the price that I pay that probably wasn't enough for my purse that I just bought. The tour continues. With the original tour guide. <laughs> These are pretty cool. but it ended up being the right turn. Oh my gosh, those guys were so sweet. Had tea and pictures and I was a little wary at first because you know we've already gotten the tour thing, but just free tea. Free tea and pictures. So sweet. So fun, right? Oh God, that's the best part of the day right there. <laughs> After all that super fun craziness, we're ready to take a break. We're gonna grab some food and have our first traditional Moroccan meal. Well, I guess the name makes sense, right? Yeah, I did not expect that. It's a restaurant set in a ruined buildings with in like all this gardens. I expect to see any turtles. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up, you guys. Hello. So what? <laughs> oh my gosh. We're talking about taking pictures with this group of guys and about our experience in Medina and dead and something. Hmm. The important thing is the human connection is what makes it magical. It is. And that's what we experienced. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were just so genuine with their emotion toward us. The love and the brotherhood and mm -hmm. uh, it was like family. That's all we've experienced so far, really. In it's Morocco, been, well, yeah. All the just, people showing so much yeah. love. Oh, wow. How pretty it is. So as usual, I, I asked our lovely waiter what his favorite is. And the only thing he said immediately was the lamb tagine. Looks amazing. We have plums, apricots, some nuts on top, sesame seeds. We also got a fresh Moroccan salad. The parents are already digging in. They said it's delicious. The salads here have been so good so far. And Sammy, let's see what you got. I went simple. I just got a white bean stew. I love being in a country where I can order a white bean stew or lentil stew. It's one of my favorite dishes and I'm just very excited to be having this. Mm. Simple, delicious bean stew. Yummy. Mm. That's spicy so well. The lamb is perfectly cooked, melts in your mouth. Awesome recommendation. So I'd never think to add fruits and nuts to this lamb, but amazing combination. Like mom said, it gives us a little sweetness and I love the crunchiness of the peanuts. We've just made our way over to the tanneries. There's a specific tannery here that you can pay a couple dirham to the owner and he'll give you like some mint leaves and you can go up to his terrace and it overlooks all of the tanneries and the people working. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pretty amazing view up here. It's pretty cool too. There's like three other viewpoints. Everybody's looking down on the tanneries. So many different colors with yellow, red, blue. The mountains in the background, you can see great views of Medina. What we lose for drums. Yeah, oh, okay. that's so cool. This goat skin these for drums. And the best quality we lose for jacket. Oh, for jacket. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh 
What an amazing day here in Fez. Love walking through this Medina. The Moroccan hospitality has just exceeded my expectations. People are so friendly. So many great connections here. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate all you guys. Love you all. See you guys in the next one. very exciting because we are heading to the Sahara Desert today. We've partnered up with Holiday Morocco Tours. They've organized everything for us this weekend. We're so excited. We're heading down to go meet up with our guide. I think it's about a nine hour drive into the desert. This has been like such a bucket list destination for us. So we're really, really excited. Sammy. Yeah, nice. Adi. Nice to, nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? And we're off. <laughs> we just arrived in little Switzerland. It's so beautiful. It's right up top of the middle of the Atlas Mountains. And all the buildings look very European. We're stopping here for a quick break just to go to the bathroom and stretch out our legs. Blame it, huh? Stop number two. Yeah. There's some wild monkeys, some horses, and donkeys, and all kinds of things happening over here. <laughs> had a quick Google search because we wanted to know what kind of apes those were. Apes because no tails. They're a Barbary macaque, so the only macaque species that's found outside of Asia. And the ones in Asia are aggressive. But those guys were very cute and tranquil, so they're the only African primate that survives north of the Sahara Desert. Taking like three naps so far in the car. Wake up, look out, see a camel, fall back asleep. Beautiful, you guys. Very delicious quick stop. Now back on the road. I hope we're over halfway. We'll see. Beautiful landscape, so. We just made a quick stop here. This is pretty sweet. This guy has an espresso machine in the back of his car. So we're getting a couple of espresso shots. Okay. Thank you. And it overlooks this beautiful Cheers. village and this valley. It's just so beautiful. So all the houses in the village are actually made out of clay. Perfect little pick me up. How's it look? Good look? Good. Yeah. That color is really cute on you, actually. There we go. Uh, I have it on now. I have to buy it. <laughs> We just made another quick stop overlooking this beautiful valley. We have a green oasis. There are over 3 million palm trees in this area. The people that they live here, they depend on this valley. And each family has a little part of land. We have switched vehicles, we have switched guides. We are heading from the town of Merzuga into the desert. It's supposed to be a bumpy ride, so buckle up. Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> We just dropped off all of our luggage really, really quickly and we're going to rush up to the top of the dunes and see sunset. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look how beautiful this is. 
start right oh my I know first sunset did not disappoint how lucky is this with clouds and everything so all the colors are coming out this is so perfect timing we had a little fun photo shoot where I got sand in my eyes and my teeth and my hair <laughs> I'll put those pictures up now it's pretty funny <laughs> just arrived to our tent in the Sahara Desert. Look how massive this place is, you guys. And I was a bit surprised. Look how plush this bed looks in the middle of the desert. Anyway, it, it reminds also, me of like a circus tent too. I know, the colors are very <laughs> vibrant, I which, love it. which I love. The boss. <laughs> oh, the boss first. <laughs> to the Sahara. To the Sahara. Sahara. We just had our welcome tea, and apparently they told us to put on these numbers. But I'm not sure if Your mom my dad. parents are tricking us or not, because they're like, oh yeah, put them on for dinner. And they said you have to put them on for dinner. But I feel like they're lying to us, but I'm going to put them on anyway and just be the only one wearing it. <laughs> You look like a wizard. <laughs> you I look didn't. like a witch. Yeah, a wizard. I'll take a wizard. Sammy, it's come it's on. too hot. No, come on. Tommy, I'm dying. I'm dying, babe. Yeah. That's nice. I'm, I'm, I wear the robe. Oh, she put it back it's on, very people. Festive. I put it back on because I didn't want to be a poor sport. Um, are we ready for this? <laughs> is this an initiation? It is. I like it. Thank you. First course soup. Some soup. Yummy. Just spicing things up with some Berber homemade hot sauce. Look how she pours her wine. <laughs> it's just so I don't Quit spill. It. Yeah, so there. I'd rather have a good grip. One for my homies. <laughs> One for my homies. <laughs> to the Sahara. 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 Wait, we didn't clink. Cheers. Thank you. Second course. It's a fruit salad and a veggie salad. Tomatoes, apples, bananas, and cucumbers. Interesting. Ship. Yes. For our main course, we're having beef tagine. We've had tagine a few times already, and this is by far the best. The beef is so tender. It has a little hint of cinnamon and cardamom. Oh, delicious. For dessert, we have a fruit salad with sprinkles and syrup. And I don't have a spoon. <laughs> Just dig him with your mouth. Go. I'm ready. Go. Thank you. Oh, he's bringing here. No. He's bringing me one. I'm so uncouth.
an incredible morning. Ooh, sunrise here. So beautiful, right? Yeah, the landscape just goes on forever. It honestly looks like a painting. And I almost did not wake up this morning. Tommy left for sunrise like a few minutes before me and I looked out the window and I saw that it was light and I was like, oh, I'm coming. And he locked me inside <laughs> the tent. So there's a like a latch on the outside, so I closed it, otherwise the door's gonna swing open. And, and he locked me inside the tent. And I texted him, I was like, you locked me inside. And his phone was on silent, but he like, ran. So I had to sprint in the dunes and run back down. And then this other Italian couple were making fun of us. They're like, oh, we saw you running. <laughs> he came back for me. He gets a little excited with taking pictures. <laughs> All right, let's go get some coffee. <laughs> he definitely hasn't had his coffee yet. He doesn't want to get up. So we just had a wonderful breakfast. We're just waiting for Addy to pick us up. He's gonna show us around the desert today. Cute. Yeah. Then you can just tuck it in there. Yeah. Okay, sweet. I appreciate it. Look how cute you look. We're ready for the day. I saw and tied my scarf up to where it doesn't choke my neck. So, and if you get dusty, just do like this. I like it like this, it's fairly cute. My head is hot. <laughs> it's hot, but oh, a fly just landed on the lens. Flies are out of control. made our way back to Merzuga to meet up with our wonderful guide, Addy. Looking good today, man. Looking yeah. fresh. <laughs> Looking fresh. We learned Addy grew up in a nomadic family where he had 14 brothers and sisters and was the first of his family to go to school. We were super lucky to have a fantastic guide who became the heart and soul of this adventure. We learned, yalla, yalla. Yalla, yalla. That, we learned that that means let's go. So Adi just brought us to the local market and we're gonna pick up some vegetables because the nomads are going to cook them up for us for lunch. So we're just gonna go pick up some veggies. Good? Yes. All right. Ready for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I love all of the different landscapes. You have like the dunes, then the flat black rock, and then the mountains over there. Yeah, it's so beautiful. It feels like you're on, on some other planet. Exactly. It feels like a different planet. We, as the Berbers, we take, I mean, in anything like manifestations or pictures, we take three. The Berber fight for three things. A well is the language because it's getting extinct in North Africa. The second one is a hell, the Berber land, which is North Africa, North African countries, I mean. Then Afghan is the Berber people, I mean, fighting for their, their rights and uh, the humanity and everything. That's what does it mean. So okay. instead of peace, you do three. Yes. And then he was making fun of me because I can only do two and a half. <laughs> oh, get up! <laughs> two and a half. So, this is why. <laughs> la, 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 let's start. Oh, to the camel. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
So this is the local food in the area. In English, we call it Berber pizza. In the Berber language, we call it Tarum Nuyinsu or Abadir. Nowadays, they cook it in the oven. Mm -hmm. But in the past, because the people, they were nomads, they move a lot, they just follow the rain. So in, in order to save time while they are moving, they have to make lmilla or abadir, or this Berber pizza. Mm -hmm. They make a big bread like that. She will put all the vegetables inside, make it together, then cook it in the oven. I noticed that there was a lot of bread and it doesn't really seem like there's too many people around, but I had asked Addy, like, you know, she has a lot of food here, a lot of bread. Is she making this for a lot of people? And he said, yes, she's making it for the family. That's quite big, but they also traditionally make a lot of food just in case any unexpected guests show up, they have enough food to host everybody, which is really sweet. Very generous. Yeah, super generous. Is that her and niece to sit like that for so long? She is used for that maybe. Yeah. <laughs> So as the mom's preparing the Berber pizza, the daughter's collecting rocks here. I'm being picky about my rock selection. So this is the, the pizza oven, the oven. She takes some of these sticks and she puts them over there until they get very, very hot. And then there's some rocks on top of the iron here and they prevent the pizza from sticking. Once everything gets hot, she puts the pizza on top of the rocks until it's cooked and ready to eat. That is the end of the demonstration. Who's that good looking dude? Addy continued to tell us about how the nomads live. He showed us their living quarters, how they get their water, and talked to us about the roles of each family member. So pretty. The mother. She is the one who do a lot of things. She has to make the breakfast for the shippers very early because the shippers mostly they start before the sunrise. Mostly for the nomads, olive oil, soup, dates, and tea. So after the, the shippers, they have breakfast and they left the house, mostly the kids. That's why the nomads, they have a lot of kids because they need them to ship. Oh, help, yeah. Yes, exactly. After that, the mother has to uh, go to find the firewood. After bringing the firewood, she has to go again to bring the water. And they, mostly the nomads, they don't live by the next to the well. They live far away from the well because the well attract a lot of strangers. Yeah. And by the day, mostly only the women stay in the tent. And it takes an hour and a half to two hours to bring the water from the well. Then she has to prepare the lunch. After that, she has to collect all the dirty clothes mm -hmm. and take them to wash the dirty clothes. Then the day is over and prepare the dinner. Wow. Yeah. So much. <laughs> the Berber culture get a lot of symbols because of the women making carpets and expressing their emotions and their feelings. So did your mom used to do that too? Yes, she knows how to do that. Yeah, yeah of course, awesome. because yeah. we were nomads originally. So. How many children do they have in total? I'm not sure exactly. It's a yeah. big, it's a big number because yeah. he has three wives actually. Okay, yeah. So it will be Many. eighteen or something. Oh wow! Well. Our host at the camp. Yeah. Has nine brothers and sisters. Okay. So that's, he was asking me how many I had, and I told him five. And he's like, "Oh, who's surprised?" That's nothing compared to. No, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you make a lot of bubbles, it can filter the tea. It keeps the sand away from the tea. Oh, I mean, that's why that's mostly why. you can see a lot of people trying to take it up to make bubbles, especially in the desert. But nowadays, it becomes something traditional. People, they mm. like it with bubbles. Without bubbles, for example, my father, if you give him a tea without bubble, he will tell you, oh, I need tea, not oil. <laughs> Give me tea. Yeah. So, ten, ten mart? Ten mert, yes. Ten mert. Yeah. Ten mert. Look yeah. at Tommy's learning some Berber. Yeah. So any takeaways from the nomad visit at all? My first impression is just how difficult of life this is. All the work they have to do and the lifestyle they have to provide for themselves to survive. But there's also this appeal of the openness and the freedom and the natural, simple methods of cooking and laundering and doing whatever they do that's very appealing. Oh, look at the dough. Okay. It's all 
crispy and fluffy with all of the baked veggies inside. It's good to know, I think. Great spices, carrots, onion, parsley. It's great. A little bit more. The Berber pizza was delicious. This family was so kind to take us into their house and host us, weren't they? Tea, pizza, fruit. Yeah, it's pretty funny watching me kill a pomegranate, but. I didn't <laughs> capture that. <laughs> All right, back in the car. Let's keep road tripping. On top of the car. <laughs> so we just stopped at off at this place to listen to some music. Yeah, so fun. That girl's getting into it for dancing. This is the filter. This one, we use it to filter the water. So we stopped to take a little walk in this oasis in the middle of the desert, and I just love like walking in. You get the contrast of like the bright blue sky, the orange sand dunes, the green palm trees. Pig. It's a pig? Excellent. Oh, wow, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie got it. He said, what a tree is this? She said, fig. Have we ever yeah. seen a fig tree before? No. That was a great guess. Well, we've already, we know dates are in the palm trees. <laughs> we already know the almond tree and the olive trees. So she's like, what else comes from Morocco? <laughs> she guessed fig. That was pretty good, huh? So we're walking through these beautiful gardens. It's pretty cool. All the families own their own plot of land and they all share the irrigation system. It's a very beautiful place too, with all the greenery. Oh my gosh, they have so many things planted in here. We've seen almond, peppers, parsley, wheat, corn. Everybody is planting something different. They had one plot that was just full of hot chili peppers. I was like, oh, that family likes it spicy and that's exactly what I would be growing too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I think we're about to ride camels. But I'm a little nervous. They're kind of bigger when you stand next to them. Aren't they? Yeah. So we just dropped us off. We're about to ride camels back to camp and hopefully enjoy another sunset here. Are you ready? Yeah, it's going to be a really great way to end the day. It's been such a great experience today. So We heard they're not super comfortable. This is like, I think, an hour ride. So I'm wondering how your parents are going to do. I'm wondering how we're going to do. We'll see. Yeah. There you go. Look. Thank you, brother. Okay, we're ready. ready. We're officially ready. Okay, this is Mohammed. Mohammed. Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay. Nice to meet you. Can you just go up? Yes. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Flexibility, mom. Yeah. Hold it, yeah. Good boy. Wow, you got you got up wow. there. Wow. You got a big boy. Woo! Oh, it's really good. Hang on know. tight, right? Oh, oh, right. Hang, on, yeah. Hang on, baby. Nice. <laughs> Tom and Jackie, how are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, my legs feel like jelly. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for the ride. I appreciate it.
Well, that was super fun. First time riding a camel. That was great. Oh, I can't see. My <laughs> She's like walking into the shot like this. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So we're gonna rush back, use the bathroom, get some water, and run and find our sunset spot. Another amazingly beautiful sunset. <laughs> Something about being out here in the desert, out in nature, it's so quiet, so beautiful. Check out the moon behind me, Horizon. Very special place for guide and seeing how the nomads live today. The lady making us lunch, her little daughter helping out, watching after the baby. Very special travel day and to share it with family. Wherever you are, hope you're doing well. Hope life is good. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the morning. You guys ready for another uh, crazy dune ride? Is that what we're about to do? I think so. I don't know how it goes. I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yes. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Have All the best. Have a nice day. You too. All right, switch cars. Back with daddy. Ready to rock and roll. Yalla, that's what you have to say. Yalla. Yalla. First order of business is coffee. Thank you. And we got half and half, which they call niece niece here. Cheers. So we just arrived to the town of Rasani. We're gonna walk through their market here. He said the market is three days during the week. They were, I love all the different piles of colors. It's just, yeah, really pretty. I love the smells in this market. Everything mm. feels really fresh. Yeah. Speak English. Welcome. What are you buying, Mom? I'm gonna buy some saffron. One gram is forty. Yes. Is that oregano? Yes. Yeah. They have these like little red clay pots, and they're hard, but you put water and rub your finger, and it's lipstick. So cool. Wow, it's like clay with red paint. It's pretty heavy duty. We go to a lot of markets, so we see typically like the same things, you know, in different places. But this is something new that I've never seen before. That is so interesting. I love that. Cleaning the teeth? Yeah. Yeah, like a toothpick. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like a travel, you could get a, like a little travel pack of toothbrushes yeah. on the go. You can buy a donkey over here, and you can buy your kid a bicycle over there. <laughs> This is such a, a raw local market. So much produce and spices, but also lots of, you know, other things. Clothes, bikes, animals, everything. It does not get more authentic than this. Adi just told us that these donkeys not only bring all the goods to the market for them to sell, but they're also for sale as well. If anybody comes around and wants to buy one, you can negotiate a price. They like to make a lot of noise too. He didn't like me. Ideal 
Deeds Village bus. And basically they come in on market day. Some people might come in with them or they give a list to the bus driver of things they need from the market. I could have spent all day in that market. It was so authentic and real. Oh, such a great experience. I feel like I could make a whole video just on that. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. I loved just seeing all of the vendors and I feel like we saw some stuff we don't normally see. So we just made a quick stop after the market. He's checking right now and see if we can have tea with this local family. And it looks like they said yes. Yeah. I kept Your the secret. Trick, I kept That's the a good trick. trick. You knew? I knew. I guess. Let's see if the family oh, That's what we were talking before. Oh, <laughs> when you said oh, that's so sweet. He's like, I'm going to check with this local family. It's his family. Oh, that's, oh, that's cute. Hey, we get to meet his wife. Addy gave us a tour of his beautiful home and introduced us to his wife. A beautiful couple. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> he explained to us how houses are traditionally laid out, and we were able to get to know his wife as we enjoyed tea and cookies together. See, there's a big plasma, I told you. Absolutely. <laughs> Modern mo nomads. Yeah. Hey, man, delicious. Thank you. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Back on the road, she was, they were just the sweetest hosts ever. That was a nice little tea break. It's a beautiful home too. Beautiful home, beautiful family. Eight. Eight means family in the Berber language. Oh, quick lunch stop. And it's right on time because we all need to stretch. Hungry, I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Ooh, we ate butter, nice. Welcome this trip. Thank you. Yeah. No, what do you think of the best soup in Morocco? <laughs> it, it, it's it really is good. the best soup that we've had so far. It's really good. Mm. It's like warming my soul at the moment. Wow. Ooh. I got chicken, couscous, and veggies. I got mm. lamb couscous. And I went with Mohammed's recommendation, which was the meatball tagine. The best thing about tagines is they're so different, you mm. really can't get sick of them. You can order a variety. That is true. I've had them like five nights in a row, and I'm <laughs> still trying new ones every time. <laughs> Perfect, guys. So nice to meet you all. Thank you, so you. Thank you man. Thanks for all the love. Thank you. I'm full. So full. So yummy. So yummy. And the best servers. Oh my gosh. I know. They were so sweet. Wow. Look at this. Adi just dropped us off in the middle of this gorge for us to walk through. We have like these red canyons on the sides of us with this river running through. It's so nice, right? Yes, it's beautiful. That was an incredible stop. This gorge is so beautiful and huge, the colors. We had nice little sun flares coming through. I love all the locals hanging out by the river. Beautiful, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my man. All right, made it to our room. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. We are just, uh, oh, the bed's comfy. <laughs> We're just gonna relax tonight. Good night, guys. Today we're heading to a nearby village. It's actually very famous. It's been in lots of movies and TV series, including Gladiator, the Game of Thrones series, and The Mummy. I'm pretty excited to go check it out. Okay, we're off.
Our first stop was Orzazat, where a guide was waiting for us. All this the old town of Orzazat. Imagine in the old time it was for the control of caravans. He explained that this used to be a crossing point for African traders on their way to northern Morocco and Europe. He walked us through the city showing us how these unique houses were built. Then bamboo mm-hmm. and mud and straw like that. Oh. That's the terraces. If your buddy, not no my bag. friend. No bag. No bag. No bag. No bag. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Our second stop was Ayat Ben Hadju. This ancient village is renowned for traditional mud brick houses and has served as a backdrop for so many films and television series. Our guide took us through the village showing us different backdrops from Gladiator, Lawrence of Arabia, and Game of Thrones. This is such a unique place. It's pretty awesome. Our guide's family is actually from here. He just showed us his mother's house and his father's house. <laughs> Gladiator, 3,500 extra it's with the Russell crew. Mm. It's him. So our guy was actually an extra in this movie. There he is, which is pretty crazy. One of the highlights of the tour was learning about how Berbers used to send secret messages. We use the saffron and the tea with sugar. Now you can see two colors, saffron and indigo. After when they heat it with a fire, the tea becomes up like this. They would use saffron to create a type of invisible ink and then hide the messages within the transport animals and then the receiver could wow. reveal the message using you heat. See, they smells like a cream brulee. <laughs> because uh, of the sugar. Oh. This is the oh, Instagram. The yeah, the Instagram oh, wow. money. Wow. Yeah. So the black is a tea with sugar, the yellow is a saffron, the blue is indigo. what our guide was explaining, this is the highest point above the Kasba. They were on the lookout for the caravans to come in. They'd be coming in all the way on the desert from camels. In the wintertime, they would change from camels and be donkeys and mules to actually get them over the Atlas Mountains to the sea or Europe. Besides goods, it was a big slave transportation in the time. earthquake that hit here in September that this town was very lucky. There was a huge wedding taking place that day and all the people or most of the people were out of their homes, especially the clay homes that there was damage to. The homes made out of cement, um, there was no damage. Thank goodness for those, that couple yeah. getting married yes. saved the day. Such an incredible view. I don't want to get any further. What an incredible view to end this trip. Oh, this Sahara trip was so epic. Thank you, Holiday Morocco Tours and our amazing guide, Adi. Such a spectacular time. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate all you guys. See you guys in our next video in Marrakesh. We are welcome, guys. I'm happy that you enjoyed it. I will be so happy. To see you again, maybe in another year. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So good nice meeting you, man. Hope to see you again. Thank you very thank much you, for the good time with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Marrakesh, Morocco. We spent the day yesterday relaxing. First day here in Marrakesh, getting a haircut first thing. I'm at Omar Barbershop, the place has the best review. So I'm excited to see what they do. It's getting a little long. Welcome to Morocco. And today we are just out and about getting our first impressions of the city. It's already been so hectic. We're gonna do some touristing around, see the top sites, go to the main square, and just see what we can get up to. So 
I just walked by the sugar cane stand. I can never turn those down. It is one dollar for a small drink of sugar cane. All right, what's this first stop we're at? Okay, we are here at, this is the largest mosque in Marrakesh. It was built in the 12th century. And the minaret is really pretty. It was, I think it's 77 meters tall, 253 feet. Okay, thank you, tour guide. You're welcome. <laughs> Wow, we picked, I think, the hottest day of the week to do our touristing around the city because yesterday was like beautiful and overcast and kind of cool and we just like relaxed and did nothing. And today it is like sweltering and it's just the morning time, but that's our own fault. I can't imagine what it's like in the summertime though, so we can't oh complain God. too much. Everywhere you walk in the city, there's a bunch of horses and carriages that people can get rides on. And a lot of people taking a ride, which is kind of surprising. We heard it's not the best thing to do because the horses are not the best taken care of. There are over 50 lined up on the street right here though, which is kind of crazy. So this is the main square. It's called Gemma Elfna. It's basically like the main focal point for locals and tourists. It's a UNESCO site. Um, I think during the day they have like fruit and veg markets and like, I don't know, souvenir stalls. And then at night is like the street food stalls and stuff like that. So yeah. Let's walk into this craziness and see what we can see. I already have people like yelling at me to look at a snake. I'm like, I am not going to make eye contact with anyone with a snake. You can already hear tons of live music. You've seen a bunch of snakes and monkeys on leashes. It's a lot of chaos here. I won't be getting a lot of B-roll here because I'm not going to tip everybody I take a shot of. And I heard they can way overcharge you, so. So I approached the musicians with the cobras. Those cobras are intense. I first asked him, I showed him 70 cents. He was like, no, no, paper money, paper money. <laughs> and then the musician called me over. He was like, how much do you have? So I pulled out $1.50 and they let me take some photos and videos of them. The music's really good. The cobras are frightening though. They're like trying to bite at these drums they had. It's, it's pretty intense here, as you can tell. So we've been offered braids, which I said my hair is not long enough, fruit, juice of course, there's tons of the cobra stands with the music, and henna, like this. Yeah, henna. Oh, very pretty, but she no thank lucky. you. No thank you. Like you. You make it crazy. <laughs> no, 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 man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See? Just like that. They try to grab you and ride on you, and then before you know it, you're already paying. Close call. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Good to see you. Have a good day. How cute was that little toy horse? I know. I was like, that's the only animal on a chain I want to take a picture of. That was so cute. Found a spot in the shade to have a coffee, a little bathroom break and some peace from the hustle and bustle. Yeah, perfect. So it was really funny as we were coming in, we were looking for a place to get a cappuccino or a coffee, and both the competing restaurants at the cafes came out, and they were like, yeah, look at my menu, look at my menu, and then I was like, oh, cappuccino, how much? And the one guy was, it was $3.50, or 350 and the one here was, it was only 250 of course, so we chose the cheaper option, and then the competing restaurant owner was like, Welcome home, you know, because we're bargaining and finding the best deal, which is super cute. The cappuccino looks delicious. Best coffee I've had yet in Morocco. Milkshake. Perfect, my man. I love that. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Okay, so we just walked over to the Sadian Tunes. It's the final resting place for the old sultan. Um, Jackie's gonna go see how much tickets are, and you can see like where him and his old like coterie are laid to rest, and it's supposed to be a beautiful garden. So these tombs look super beautiful. It is 70 a person, which is about $7. All right, Jamie, what's up next? So we are going to head to the Jewish Quarter. There's like three points of interest over there, like a synagogue and the cemetery, and then we'll loop back around and head back to Gemma Elfna for the evening time. Thank you guys. Thank you. Enjoy your time, huh? Smile. 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 Smile.
Okay. Those turtles were so cute, but the lady said that they only sell them to locals, obviously, because tourists can't take them home. And they're only five euros. I know, they're so cute. Jackie thought they were fake, like the little horses on the rope. She thought they were like battery operated turtles. <laughs> Have a nice day. Morocco freely opened up their arms for to the Israelites who were fleeing persecution. And in a lot of the major cities, they had these quarters that they were housed in. As we were deciding where we're going next, the cemetery or the next market, so many people, one guy stopped on a scooter and was like, this way is the market, it's a spice auction going on, this way is the graveyard. Overall, the Moroccan people have been super helpful and sweet. We just stopped to see the Jewish cemetery. It's 10 dirham each to get in, a dollar. In the mid 1500s, there were 35,000 Jewish people living here in the Malak. Yeah. We're presently at the Jewish cemetery. Um, is huge. At one time when typhus ran its course, there were over 7,000 children that are buried here yeah. of Jewish descent. Very sad. So at the cemetery, the arrangement of the graves is very unique to Marrakesh. The men and women are separated, and so are the children. And on the very outside, the protectors of the cemetery, like the judges and the scholars. I thought that was pretty touching. Perfect, Hassan. Nice Thank to meet you, you man. Nice, nice to meet you. He's very friendly. You are very friendly. Good day. You too, brother. You too. We have, we have come full circle. We are back in Gemma Alpha, the main square. We are starving because it is like four in the afternoon now, so we're going to go find some food. I feel like you can always find your way back to the main square just by listening to that music. It's uh, very distinguishable. So for my starter, I ordered Vissara, which is a soup made out of fava beans, and they drizzle olive oil and some lemon on top. We haven't tried this yet. It actually looks so good. Hot, creamy, but hearty. Great flavors. There's some spices in there too, some turmeric. Mm, I love the lemon and olive oil on top though. This is delicious. This is exactly what I would order. I love like the blended up beans with the olive oil. It's so creamy. It's really good. Salad was unexpected because I did not know that we were getting that with our dish, but it's really cute. It's in the shape of a heart. Shukra. Shukra. That'd be great. Woohoo! Came this place. It's primarily known for seafood, but they also have a great local Moroccan food as well. I ordered the beef tagine, Tommy ordered the lamb tagine, and then we also got two mixed plates of seafood, and I think we're all gonna just split everything. No matter how many tagines we eat, they don't get old for me. I love them. And I got mine with vegetables. And whenever he saw us filming, he set up the plate to where like, it's very photogenic looking. He left the top for us to film. It was, he knows very, what doing. It was very cute. Anyway, we're starved. I'm ready to dig in. The meat is just falls off. Like, look at that. It is so good. The meat is so tender. It's really yummy. First bite of the lamb tagine. So delicious. I'll still say Sammy's beef is a little bit better. But I love the flavors of the lamb. It's a little more fatty, but great, great find Sammy. This restaurant is How was everybody's meal? It was wonderful. I cleared my plate. It was so good. Good work, baby. It was fabulous. I love it. Best fish I've had in Morocco so far. And that's that's surprising, isn't it? It is. Perfect way to end our first day here in America. New record. I didn't know the size of the 
Mint, right? Mint. Mm. Mint and a little bit of sugar. Chicken tajine. Oh, no. Yeah, she ordered tajine. No, I think for you. You need for her. Yeah. Yes, photo. Her acting skills are not good. He's better. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Over with us our tagine. We're all like stuffed, and he's like, You order chicken tagine? And we're like, No, we did not order chicken tagine. Have you? No, we, we don't want the chicken. No, we had meat. You did? No. No, we didn't order it. And he kept it going for a bit, and it was the check. Anyway. Clever, clever. That was very clever. It's Oh. Oh. Thank you, and he wrote us a sweet little note. That's so I sweet. Hope you do something great and make you happy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> He's so sweet. <laughs> so what is this? Well, he got us good, didn't he? <laughs> he got us so good. I love it. We're so, we're so on our guard after being in, you know, being in Morocco for a while. <laughs> it's just too funny. So this is our waiter who is amazing, a trickster too with the bill. It was so great. Yeah, Thank you for everything, man. Good joke. <laughs> good joke, there good joke. <laughs> Alright, what do you guys think? First impressions of America? The tour was amazing. It was good so tour. much fun. Good and Sammy. Sammy. Sammy I want to tour. give thanks to Sammy because she did a wonderful job of, you know, directing us and Aww, getting us to the right know. spot. And you know, usually she didn't we get, get lost yeah. sometimes. <laughs> and she didn't get lost once. Not it was even. amazing. I guess at the end of the trip I'm going to get it together at some point. Yeah, it was great. Well, the hospitality here in Morocco has been Super amazing. I'm, I'm surprised by Marrakesh too. Like first impressions here, we read a lot of things about how high pressure it is. People are hassling you, asking Just for get money, hustled but a bit, you know the yeah, tricks but, or stuff. But it was actually so wonderful. That's very rare compared to the normal locals you actually meet. Yeah, it was so great. Great first impressions of Marrakesh. Tomorrow we are doing a food tour, yeah. um, so we're super stoked about that. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next. It's very rare on a food tour that every dish just hits right. Ah! I'm gonna eat a snail. <laughs> the owners and the people working were super friendly. Such great people. I can't say that enough here in Morocco. He's throwing me for the loop with the spleen and the liver today. These are amazing. Now <laughs> oh, that hits the spot. Look how crispy it is. You are my favorite place to go. Welcome back to Morocco and welcome to Marrakesh. Today we're going to be eating our way through the city on a Marrakesh street food tour. We partnered up with a chef's tour and we're heading towards the Medina to go meet up with our guide right now. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, man. So the Medina of Marrakesh goes back to 1062. So the walls over there, that's the rampart or the protection, nine kilometers long. There are 21 gates that spawn to get in and out of the Medina. So you're gonna try one interesting local pancake that we call Baghreer. He's buying the pancakes from here and then we're gonna take it to another shop for like to put some toppings on it, I think. Oh, they're good, yeah. Very good. If it's correctly done, it triggers with the holes on the top. Hence, sometimes people they would call it pancake with thousand holes. With the topping, it matches perfectly. So we get to call it amlo. Mainly uh, three ingredients: argan oil, honey, and tuna nut. Mainly almonds or peanuts. I love how it has all of these little holes and then the filling just seeps yeah, out yeah, of it. Yeah, this, this, this. Mm. Wow, great start. Yogurt and granola is like a staple for my breakfast. This is the best yogurt I've had in a long time. I wish we could buy this in the store because this is amazing. So much flavor. Not overly sweet. That's so, so good. So if you want to buy fresh yogurt here in Marrakesh, when you walk by these little shops, you just look for the glass bottle or like a jar, and then you can buy the homemade yogurt. 
and it's worth it. You should get it. This was wonderful. It wasn't thick, you know, it was just very creamy and very flavorful. Really good. But try to tuck it in, like okay. that it becomes a bit, bit uh, fluffy with small like this? Yeah. We're taking phyllo dough and then we're putting the peanut paste in it and wrapping it up to make a little pastry. Oh, I feel like I'm messing up. Yeah, you just need to tuck it, it's all correct. Okay. Oh my gosh. You see? You see, the, the difference is just like one yeah. year low. <laughs> the difference is this is perfect and last not. <laughs> Look how cute it is. And it's in the shape of a rose. He sprinkled sesame seeds and rose water on top of it. And it's the phyllo dough and wow, look how sugary and sweet it looks. This is great. That's so delicious. Dessert already. I like that in the food tour. Of course, to make this. Like, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw you ate one of those. Yes. You always eat one of those, yes. right? Oh. Yes. We know they're like, like freshly made. Oh, so how can you not? Wow, that's so delicious, man. That's like the cow split. The filling, yes. The filling would be the mixed beef with the vegetables. Mainly carrot, potato, onion. And then it's served as a snack, mainly inside the local bread. Oh god. Yes, so it's called this is spleen. This is spleen mixed with minced beef mixed with vegetables. Come try it with me. I'm kinda of nervous. No, I think it's gonna be good. Alright. It tastes like ground hamburger, but a little more bitter. Yeah. The taste That's after taste is. is bitterness. The spice is really great though. You can tell that there's beef in it too. It looks a little skeptical, but it smells really good. I love it. Mm. Very heavily spiced. The meat's really tender though. And the bread is always amazing here. Ah. Mm. Really good. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Deb? I liked it. It was uh, some really different spice flavors that I'm not used to, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. We're going inside the local bakery. They don't like a lot of cameras, so we're just gonna keep it on us, but we're gonna go see how they make the bread. Look how quick he is, too. Our guide said they can put 300 to 500 loaves of bread at a time. It's crazy. They can do a lot. So we came to dry these sardine sandwiches, so he just stuffed the baked sardines in this fresh made bread and squeezed a little bit of lemon on top. I was really nervous that we were going to be eating a lot of the same foods that we've been eating on our trip, but so far everything has been very unique, which I'm excited about. It's simple food, but it's really, really good. You can really like enjoy the taste of the sardines, and they cook it right in here. That was my favorite so far, the saltiness and with the fresh lemon. Oh, That was a special shop. I couldn't film a lot of the inside, but the baker let me show him. The oven was so humongous. What a special tour so far, so unique. We were just talking about the weather, <laughs> and he was saying it was cold. He just got this jacket, and I'm currently sweating in the t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> it's amazing the different climates when you travel, what people are used to. Your summers must be very hot, huh? Yeah. I love how the tour has been like hands-on. Like the rolling of the pastries was so fun, and then he says like you know when they form the relationship with the bread people, then like eventually you'll be able to help like make the bread. So fun. Oh, man, thank you. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Five bits of the hammer and uh, you can touch it. It's still warm, and you can see it's black from the bottom because here, yeah, yeah, other people stand here. Why not make it? Um, <laughs> yeah. 
So what was the meat that he's using here? He's a uh, goat meat. Goat meat. Oh, nice. That's why I'm invited in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the really nice gentleman cooking the tangier let me try his. It was made out of goat. And he said, most people don't really like it, but he was loving it. Our guide was eating it. And he gave me a little bite and, oh my gosh, it's so delicious. Reminds me of lamb. He said it has a little kick, but I thought it was awesome. We just walked down the street that sells all the leather goods and I was like, ooh, this leather has a smell because it has a very distinct smell. And he was like, that's how you know it's the authentic, genuine leather is if it has the smell. Goat skin. Oh. You shave, you sip of water, you stress, you make the drum pop. I love the sound, that's cool. We just walked down the street where there was a lot of like people making shoes and I was asking our guide if that's they sell these shoes on the next street over where the tourists are buying them and he said yes and no. Sometimes you risk like buying imported shoes over there, but if you come straight to the maker then you know you're shopping local. So and supporting, and supporting small businesses. Which is cool. I just thought you would be interested in this. He's making genuine leather balls. Oh really? Sports. Wow, look how cool they are. Now that's a souvenir I would love to bring home. I believe there were $70 for it. You could see them hand stitching it. What an awesome shop. So we're at our next stop. We're going to be trying lentils, white beans, chicken skewers, and liver skewers. Was, I don't know. There was, some, there was something different there at the end. I'm not quite sure what it is. We just put a drizzle of olive oil and a little chili pepper on top. Good. Thank you. Thank you. We have our two skewers here. We did the chicken with turmeric and coriander or cilantro. And then this one is going to be the beef liver with no seasonings. But he says when you take a bite, take some with the liver and a little bit of fat because the liver tends to be dry. So I'm going to go for liver first because that's the one I'm most nervous about. So he's throwing for the loop with the spleen and the liver today. Have we ever had liver before? I don't think no. I have. That is really good. I'm surprised. You like it, wow. Well, I was, ner I was nervous. <laughs> Not much of an organ person. <laughs> and this one has turmeric and coriander. Mm. That one's really, really good. Yum. Mm. That's, that's a hot one, but I like it. It's good. My mouth is <laughs> on fire. Everybody's been raving about the liver, which is really surprising. They said you have to have the fat, perfectly balances out. Let's try it out. Wow, you guys are right. That is so delicious. Who would have thought we're loving liver? How do you say delicious? We say it is wing. Is wing. Is wing. Is wing. <laughs> These are like the two typical starters you get with a normal Moroccan meal. You get the white beans and the lentils. And we already know that I love beans. <laughs> and I love these for sure. We've had them oh, a lot and I love them. She gets them better. Mm -hmm. the, the liver was surprisingly um, kind of hard for me to even try. I probably haven't tasted liver for over 60 years when your parents made you eat some, but um, this was very good. We're not a liver family, as you can tell, but that was fantastic with the fat mixed with it. it made it salty and it tastes like just really good beef. I loved it. Well, that was a great stop. The owners and the people working were super friendly. Such great people. I can't say that enough here in Morocco. <laughs> this is one of the places where you could try finest strawberry in the Medina. <laughs> so we're having a rabbit tagine, which is very new for us, and it's one of the only original places left that still makes a rabbit tagine. 
the main owner down here was showing us it was the top 10 places to eat here in Marrakesh. So I'm uh, very excited to try this out. Mm, it is so tender and delicious. I love all the spices they have. Another very special dish. We've had a lot of tagine, and I've always tried to figure out which one I like the best, the lamb or the beef. Um, I don't have to worry anymore because the rabbit wins. <laughs> the broth is so amazing, spiced perfectly. Oh, I could eat this all every day. Wow. I just wanted to eat rabbit because all the books I'm reading, they're all out in the woods cooking rabbit on a fire. <laughs> and it's really point. got me craving some rabbit. You've been craving it for a while. <laughs> I've been like, who's gonna, we're gonna go to the woods and cook a rabbit on the fire. Wow. Lemony, herby, and it kind of tastes like just like dark chicken. Mmm, super moist. That is really good. This rabbit was, tagine was my favorite meal in Morocco. It's pretty good. That sums it up. Mm -hmm. oh. And I got my, my rabbit fix. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this, one, this one's pretty good. Oh, look how cute you guys are! Oh, awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you guys. You're welcome. How is it, the tagine? Best meal in Morocco, yeah. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Oh, it smells good. The six spices: curcuma, cinnamon, ginger, cardamom, cloves, and anise. I love that smell. Oh, that's oh. nice. Oh my gosh. That smells like the best seasoning mixture ever. Yeah, like Christmas. Medium or strong? Go for it. Medium. 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 Yeah. What's your favorite? Medium or strong? Huh? Yeah. Uh, strong. Is it strong? Strong. <laughs> <laughs> the reason they have like the sun is like to distribute the heat equally. As they keep moving, so they touch hot sand all the time. <laughs> Yeah, you can feel the heat. Once you stir the sugar in, you have to wait a couple of minutes for all the grounds to fall back down. It's really hard to wait. It's always the hardest part about Turkish coffee. It's not like drinking it when it's hot. I'm not very patient. <laughs> it took him like five minutes. Like each batch, it's gonna be two batches for us all. Mm. Now that hits the spot. After that rabbit meal, just like having old school coffee over the fire, Sammy, it fits in with your theme of your books. <laughs> it's so true. I did not expect Turkish coffee on our Morocco tour, so this is a very pleasant surprise. That coffee hit the spot. Only two dollars to see the whole process and enjoy that Turkish coffee. Wow, look at all the choices of olive. So it's harvest season, so you can see all the different color of olives they have. It's like Moroccan beef jerky. Mm. One of my favorite things, jerky. I believe it's beef jerky, right? Yeah. And they said they use this a lot when they're in the Sahara, of course, because it stays good for up to a year. It's not a jerky as I thought. It's kind of more like roast beef a little bit, mixed with a little smoky flavor. Delicious. Mm. It's very rare on a food tour that every dish just hits right. Beautiful, thanks. Thank you. Mmm, you want to get a shot of this? Look how crispy it is. Crispy phyllo dough stuffed with cheese. What's better than that? Mmm. I was surprised. It's stuffed with cheese and noodles. This is the bigger, savorier version of that little, cute little pastry we made earlier. I love savory stuff. This is delightful. So the trick is that make sure it doesn't touch your lips. Otherwise, it's gonna leave a mark. Oh my gosh! So take the whole thing. Yum. <laughs> These are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you have 
already saved your lips and your tongue. Oh, my. So Similar to dragon fruit, but even better. So much flavor. Oh my gosh. I love these. Show me your tongue. Oh my gosh. Keep it on. Thank you guys. Have a good day. So we're trying the tajir. It's cooked in a different pot than the tajine. This dish is fully from Marrakesh, where the tajine you can find all over Morocco. And this is beef. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Oh, it's so good. Do you like it more than your rabbit? Mm -hmm. Do you? That's saying something. I do like it more than rabbit. <laughs> it's so funny. I asked Rashid, I said, is this the grand finale? He was like, yeah, but we still have a few more stops after this. <laughs> like, okay. Come to this food tour, especially hungry. We say that every food tour, but this one has a ton of food on it. So that was pretty awesome. They showed us how they prepare the lamb tangier. They actually lower an entire lamb down into this pit and they cook it on an open fire for about six hours. And then they lift it up. They showed us a video. I'll try to get it from them, insert it here. I want to come back and eat that now. Trying snails. He's he's putting he's he's giving me everything today. The snails or the escargot. So they are mainly farmed in the country. The big one exported to France, Italy. You eat them as a delicacy in a fancy restaurant with the butter, where you taste only the flavor of the butter. So Moroccan snails usually we use them with the spices. The main interesting ones would be the bay leaf, the skin of the preserved lemon, two type of uh, pepper. So the flavor actually is in the broth, not in the snails. Just anywhere on the top, and then the snails would come. So the guts is always the underneath part. Mm -hmm. So this has to go, and this the fine part of the snail. Let's go for it. A good. Uh, Right. Ah! I'm gonna eat a snail. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be calm about this. Oh, that actually did pretty good. Yes, but and then it will take a little. Yes. 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 Take that off. No. 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 Oh, no, no, no. 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 Yeah, just take the part. Okay. Okay. Oh. It's great. It really doesn't taste like much. What does it taste like? The texture is similar to mussel. Yeah, like a mussel. Yes. Okay, yes. I'm like, it tastes like something I know, but I'm not. And then, and then the other flavors are here. Okay. Are here. So you sip, and then you get the kick of all the spices that were in. Yeah, the broth is delicious. And the texture of the snail is, I'm like, it's familiar. It's like a mussel. Kind of like seafoody, but there's no seafood taste. It's great. Got a cute little one. Chewy, salty. The best part is that spicy broth. Mm, so much flavor. Who would have thought? That's cargo, but not the fancy way, that's for sure. Okay, we have the finale. We're gonna have some mint tea overlooking this entire main square and the sunset's going down, so what perfect timing. This is the place to come for sunset. It is packed up here and we're just ending our tour with a little mint tea. It's a perfect ending, right? Yeah. It's like everyone had the exact same idea. It is a little crowded up here. Just a little bit. <laughs> Alright, Rashid, thank you for a great My tour. pleasure. Yeah, I enjoyed my time. You. So many fantastic stops, man. A chef's tour of Marrakesh, and if you guys are interested, we'll leave a link in the description box below. <laughs>
good morning from Essaouira. We arrived yesterday by taxi. So today we're leaving Marrakesh. What a crazy time. We had to book a grand taxi. There's only six seats possible, so we bought all the other two seats, put our backpacks and our luggage. We had too much stuff. So it was 600 total. Took a little over two hours. Our taxi driver was so quick. We just enjoyed a little coffee out of the back of this guy's truck. The espresso is always so good with this beautiful view. And there are tons of camels by us, which is always interesting. They're so huge. So we just arrived at town, dropped off our bag real quick and grabbing lunch here at Fish Burger. It has amazing reviews. And I'm assuming the seafood is going to be really good right here since we're right on the sea. Cheese on fish. Here's to the He's sneaking in here. <laughs> Welcome. We just had a little band come by and play some music on traditional instruments. We just got served my mint lemonade, which is super delicious. Wow. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. So I got the crispy fish burger. It's their best selling item here. Also got with onion rings and some tartar sauce, which I'm always a fan of. This is a massive burger. I love the looks of this bun too. I'm just gonna go for it. That white fish is so flaky. I love the coleslaw on there. What a great first lunch spot. <laughs> the waiters are so friendly too. I think we'll be back there in one of the next two days while we're here. Today we're gonna to be showing you this beautiful coastal town, showing you its unique charm, and hopefully enjoying some fresh seafood. So I believe this beach is famous from the TV series Game of Thrones with the fortress in the background. Don't quote me on that, but it looks very familiar. We're just walking through the port now. It is very rustic and authentic, I feel like. And smelly. <laughs> so many seagulls. Oh my God. And cats as well. They're all hoping for a piece of fish. I love the feel of this place though. And a lot of seagulls have had luck with yeah. fish as well. Check out all the matching blue boats here. Pretty awesome place. Jackie walks around like this when she films. She used to do a journal and now she does like video logs on her phone. But it's the cutest thing she walks around and she's like, and here we are at the da 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 camp. In the absolutely gorgeous sunset. And she whispers and Tom goes, Jackie's gonna start her own channel called the the travel whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> but she does her own video log so she can remember what her videos are of. These little alleyways smell so good this morning. Everybody's roasting their almonds right now. And it's just going through all these little streets. Oh, it's making me hungry. Time to get a coffee. Oh, the fresh stuff, huh? Uh, Those two ladies were so sweet. They let me try the amlu, which is that roasted almonds, honey, and argan oil all mixed together. They serve for breakfast a lot of places with their bread. It's so delicious. A little bottle is only $6. I'll have to get some of that before we go. Oh, I love all the pottery they have here. We just came to this little cafe. It's called Brotherhood Cafe. They serve a really, really nice spiced coffee. It has like cardamom and star anise in it. Very, very good. And everybody else got some cappuccinos. Cheers. What makes you get the spice over the normal coffee? What do you like about the spice latte? The spice. I like the spice. <laughs> <laughs> I love 
love how laid back the Medina is here, especially compared to Fez or Marrakesh. Nobody's hassling you here. The shop owners are just chilling. Great smile. Appreciate your time. So tonight's a very special night. We're celebrating Dad's birthday tonight. Oh, happy birthday! <laughs> happy birthday, Dad! We're going to for a special seafood dinner, and they're the biggest and largest <laughs> lobsters. <laughs> I guess it's the same thing, right? We had some free dinner drinks already. <laughs> you never say that to the camera. <laughs> I think they might be able to tell. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to dinner. Tom and Jackie found a great spot to have some lobster. This is Zach, Tommy. Tommy. This is Zach. Hello. What's up, Zach? Hello, hello. This Where is go? Zach's restaurant. Okay. Chez Zach. Chez Zach. Zach. Tom and Jackie scouted this place out earlier, so they're already in with the locals. <laughs> MD 2020. <laughs> what? What's that? What's MD 2020? You don't know MD 2020? Oh my god, oh, Sam. You grew up in the high life. <laughs> Mad, Mad Dog. Mad Dog is like the cheapest wine ever. Oh, I was like, you're but making less and less sense. got the job done. But it, it was like a... <laughs> wow. And how much does one of these run about? Like 600 grams. It would be at 300 dirhams. That's good. What? Just up to that. They're small glasses. We didn't, I'm just saying, we didn't say what kind of wine we were. Please stop it. <laughs> we didn't. This is you getting the real deal right here. <laughs> to my amazing father. One more Happy year. birthday. Happy birthday. Hopefully more God, than one, one more, more year. year. So maybe I had to pour it differently for these ladies. <laughs> they always. One for my homies. Jackie and I pour alcohol. We always pour it like this, and we always say one for my homies because it's more steady. <laughs> but they like to be posh like this. We don't care. <laughs> what did you say? She said I should have poured my own glass all the way up. <laughs> you should have. I thought she was going to, actually. You like Eminem? Yeah, he's my best one. I agree. Yeah. Sweet enough. Wow, look how beautiful that looks. How often do you eat lobster? Me, one time a week. One time a week? Oh, lucky you, man. <laughs> That's good. So my dad's birthday is always very special growing up. He does a rare thing, so on his birthday he buys everybody he's with and other family members presents on his birthday. Any dads out there, I highly recommend adopting this. It makes everybody so excited for your own birthday. I love the vibe too. He's playing the Eminem radio station, which is one of my favorite rappers of all time. I'm a big hip hop fan, so everything's perfect so far. So he said he's at this secret sauce now. Yeah, he's like a butter, lemon, and honey. Oh, honey. Honey also. Oh, nice. That's yeah. how they get this caramelized color. This is. Yeah, I like that, man. You really taste it? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good, man. <laughs> I seriously can't wait for this lobster. It's been such a long time. So spoiled tonight. Doing lobster more than 14 years. Of that, you know. 14 years doing lobster. Yeah. Wow, you have it mastered then, huh? Hey, how, how old are your kids? Oh, look at that, Jackie. Beautiful. Look at that. Hey, give them the two oh, small ones. Oh, this one's just <laughs> <laughs> give them the small ones. It looks so good. Good job. Lobster. Oh, that's your wife. That's bad. Nice. I love it when you call me Big, big Papa. Papa. When you got the oh, biggest yeah. lobster. Right. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Wow. That bite? Mm. Oh at least God. one more. <laughs> How was your lobster, birthday boy? Lobster's really good. Yeah? Yes. Anything you'd hope for, it's all there. Everything is so delicious. I love the little vegetable plate we got here. It is so good. Everything's so fresh. But of course, look how ginormous this lobster is. It's so hits the spot. Thank you, Dad. Happy birthday. Happy birthday!
The fries are so crispy and salty. Like everything is so everything? delicious. It's yeah. like the lobster is the star of the show, but like nothing is like lacking. It's very good. It's Oh, I'm just gonna get it for you. Eat like kings tonight. It's gonna turn into like a mukbang. Oh, we did good, you guys. How'd you guys enjoy the meal? Uh, it was so wonderful. Lobster was amazing. Side dishes were wonderful. Anytime a poor kid from the hood is eating lobster tail, <laughs> that's a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome oh, owner and chef, thank you, my man. Thank Super you on. so much. Have a good night, we see you again. Yes, hope so. Again. Hope so. Thank, thank you. you. What a super special and delicious dinner. We're gonna head over to Sunset now and enjoy our last night here. So we're in our day here at the old city walls. I feel like this, this setting makes this city. It is so beautiful. We're gonna watch sunset. This might be the most popular spot we've been to in this town. Everybody's lined up on this fortress wall overlooking the sea. The sea is so wild here, which I really appreciate and love. Pretty great spot to end the day, right guys? Doesn't get better than this. This is anyway. what, this, the ramparts here is what makes this whole area so special. And the sunsets at night and the wild, crazy ocean. Amazing. Yeah, the ocean is Amazing. truly wild right now. We stopped at a place here for dessert. Wow, that is rich. Mm. Really good, the chocolate. Multi-layer cake, chocolate on the top. Really good. Mm. This is like chocolate mousse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were walking down this alleyway. This guy was frying up some donuts. I'm always a fan of. Greasy fried bread. That delicious donut was, I think, only 10 cents, which is pretty wild. What a great place to end our time here in Morocco and Essaouira. So super laid back, so nice and relaxing. I'm gonna miss you guys. We had such a good time. Love you guys. Miss you. We'll miss you a lot. Love you, Sammy. It's been a great trip, and it was great that we could share it with each other. Wonderful. Yes. Love you guys. Love, love you. you. We love you too, Sammy. Someone said all the camera. <laughs> We made it to Casablanca. Yesterday we left my parents in Essaouira and took the six and a half hour bus ride to Casablanca. It was super easy and affordable. We're so lucky to be able to travel with Tommy's parents. We had such a great trip together. Today is our last stop here in Morocco. We only have 24 hours to explore Casablanca. This city seems much more modern than our previous stops here in Morocco. Casablanca is actually the largest city in the entire country and it's located right on the Atlantic Ocean. We had to stop in for an emergency coffee break. Sammy had to go to the bathroom really bad. And whenever you go use a place, you feel kind of obligated to buy something. We're gonna buy a small water, but whenever you buy a coffee, you get a small water. So why not get a coffee? This is actually our second coffee of the day. We went to a place right outside our Airbnb. The two girls running it are super cute and friendly. Yeah. Best baristas in Morocco. <laughs> you two are so sweet. Thank you. And conveniently, we're right outside the major landmark here. We're about to go check out. We 
just made it here to the most iconic site in Casablanca. It is the beautiful Hassan II Mosque. It is so pretty. It sits right up against the Atlantic Ocean. And honestly, the architecture on this building is beautiful. They have like that really, really tall minaret with like the turquoise intricate detailing. Oh, I love it. So we just made it to the entrance. It is pretty packed here with tourist vans. It is $13 a person for a tourist to get in to see the mosque. The grounds look beautiful as well. We don't have enough time. It takes a couple hours to explore, so we're gonna move on, but what a beautiful place. They have this beautiful promenade on the side of the mosque. There's so many locals out. They're fishing, swimming. Yeah, it's just a fun place to take a walk and the mosque is beautiful. It's very rare that I don't plan a video, but I wasn't feeling well, so Tommy planned this entire day in Casablanca because it was kind of a last minute trip for us. So I have no idea like what's on the agenda. And I was like, oh, so, you know, we've come to see the mosque, like, what are we doing next? Hopefully it's food. Is it food? To find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was anticlimactic. I hope it's food. So I just asked a couple of the fishermen if they caught anything yet, but no fish yet this morning. The wind is pretty strong though, and the waves are huge. I don't know if that affects it here, but. Okay, don't do what we did if you're starving. We walked all the way down this boardwalk, all the way to the end, and there's no way to get through. We heard from one guy, he was like, yeah, yeah, you could go through. And then one guy was like, no, no, there's no way through. So now we have to walk 20 minutes back because there's no like stairs to go up. So unless you're not hungry, then by all means, take the hour long walk. Things have taken a little bit of a turn. Tommy picked this place out for the beautiful setting and because they had a really, really great breakfast menu, but we just missed it. They stopped serving at 11 a.m. So we had to pivot. We ordered burgers, <laughs> which is super embarrassing, but the food looks amazing. We saw some other people get their food. It looks great. The ambiance is great. So we're gonna have some lunch. Ooh, that was really satisfying. I can't get enough olives here while we're in Morocco. And as you drive through the countryside, all you see is so many olive trees. This is amazing. It feels funny ordering a burger, but this thing is amazing. It has onion rings, double patty, mushrooms. It's really hitting the spot right now. And that's where we're heading next, heading to the fishing port. Perfect, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. Nice to meet Thank you, you brother. Nice Thank you, man. Thank you, Thank you, brother. See you again. Thank you. Appreciate that in a much better mood now that we had some food. It's kind of cute because the place is called Mood Cafe. <laughs> I was like, I need to go to Moods before I get in a bad mood. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the port. <laughs> It wasn't easy to find, but I'm so glad we made it down here to the fishing port. The local fishermen are so sweet. So many interesting catches too. The seafood looks so fresh and delicious. They have like little mini sharks, stingrays. Yeah, I love how their tables are just set up so nice and pretty. Everything's like, I don't know, I love it. Such high quality seafood here, no yeah. doubt. So that was kind of a bummer. We went through the whole fishing port. All the local fishermen were super friendly. Let me get shots of them, showed me all the fish. But then the policeman came up to me and said, like no photos, and he went, made me go through my camera roll and delete all the footage. I don't understand why, but that's a bummer. Um, sorry, I won't be able to share with you guys, but oh, the locals were super friendly. Such a great atmosphere. So sadly, we're walking through our last Medina here in Morocco. So many fun, <laughs> eye-opening experiences. Never been to a place with such 
authentic, real markets. So we just made it inside Central Market. It's tons of fresh seafood around here. And a guy just came up to us, he's a chef, and he's like, hey, any of the fish you want, come to my restaurant, I'll cook it up for you, grill it up, however you want. Super friendly guy. There's a bunch of locals here eating oysters. Huge fans of oysters, so of course we can't pass it up. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh. That is so good and fresh. That hint of ocean mm, hits every time. Yum. I want another one. Bismillah. Okay. That is amazing. So cold too. Usually they're kind of not so chilled. Woohoo! That was good. Let's get a couple more. That's why they're so cold. All the ice. I did this one with hot sauce. So good. So this is the lovely man that serves our oysters. So delicious, man. He owns it with his grandmother right here. She's the boss. Is it okay to get a picture of your grandmother? Yeah. Okay, boss. Beautiful smile. Thank you. Another worker here. What a great little family that was. All those oysters. Four oysters for only three dollars. So fresh and good. Oh my gosh, I want some more. Okay, I wish we would have held off just a little bit to eat because it would have been so fun to come here and pick out our fish and like have them cook it for us. So if you come to Casablanca, definitely don't do what we do did and come here first. That was the original plan. Yeah. We didn't make it for breakfast. This was for the lunch spot, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect, brother. Thank you, man. Yeah, photo. Yeah. Thank you, man. So that was super fun and exciting. After walking through the seafood part of the market, we walked through all the restaurants. Everybody's working super hard trying to pull you into the restaurants in a very friendly way though. We met so many fun locals, got some pictures with them, but it was a little overstimulating. So now we're stopping for another coffee before heading to the Royal Palace. We just made it to the Royal Palace. You're not allowed to go inside, but this beautiful gate is worth the visit alone. This is the main residence of the king here. You're also not allowed to take pictures of any of the guards or security guards, but they were so sweet. They all got all the way and they're all just standing in a little huddle over there. It's really cute. <laughs> Tommy filmed this bakery with excellent reviews. It's a family run place. It's been around since like you said the 1930s, right? Yeah. And they have so many sweets and cookies. So we're gonna go inside and pick up some sweet treats. Can you believe the selection? Oh my gosh, there's so much to choose from. I already see something that looks like a homemade Reese cup. So I want that. And then there's like already a couple cookies I see that I want. It's looks hard so, it looks so good. Ones. Well, what do you suggest? What are your favorites? All this almond. Everything is nice. Oh, everything. Oh, is good. almonds. Yes. Yeah, I think this is a sort of gift. Oh, okay. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. Oh, mm. Those are good. Good choice. Maybe two of those. Oh, yeah. the green one? That was fun, a little chaotic. Every That place is like this big and there's so many people in there, but that's how you know it's delicious. This is only $5? Yeah. We have so many cookies in here. Oh, you stuck those in there. I'm gonna do the chocolate one. It has nuts on top and also sesame seeds on the bottom. Look at that, it looks so good. Mm. 
the dark chocolate. Uh huh. So good. Uh huh. Walking to Sacred Heart Church and we walked through this skate park and we were like, oh, let's stop and watch the kids. And then Tommy got a shot of one of the guys and all of a sudden all the kids were like, watch me, film me, watch me over here. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, when little kids are like asking their parents, like, look at me, look at me, look at me. And they were just like dropping down and popping up. <laughs> it's just so cute. And we we're like, okay. Beautiful. It's just simply beautiful out here. <laughs> we just made it to the main park here in Casablanca. It's called Arab League Park. It's so beautiful. We just went through the skate park. Now we're in the gardens with this palm trees with some fountains going by. Oh my gosh, and the fountain has like marigolds growing on both sides. It's so colorful. Sacred Heart Cathedral's right over there. It's so big and bright and white. We should go check that out too. So pretty, right? Yeah, you caught me looking at the camera. I was like... <laughs> I was walking up to the gate of the church and the security guard was closing the gates and he looked at me and he's like, <laughs> and he shut it. I was like, okay, maybe next time. Oh, we just missed it. Yeah. I read you can actually go up top and get a great view, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, but the, the security guard was so cute though. <laughs> the brownie face. <laughs> just came up here to the lighthouse area. It's like right next to La Corniche. It's like this boardwalk boulevard, but we're on the area where you can see the sunset. Look, we thought we weren't gonna make it. So we were like rushing to get a taxi and get down here. But anyway. Look. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. We brought our cookies. I was just like, I just want to end the day with cookies and the sunset. So that's what we're doing. And I really wanted to end my time having a beer, which we have not had one beer here in Morocco. And they serve them here on the boardwalk, but instead we had this amazing view, which I cannot complain about. Wow, today was like a whirlwind of a day. We were like trying to fit it all in and running all over the city, but it we was- We walked almost 12 miles today too. I know, I checked my steps. It was like over 20,000 steps. I was like, whoa, that was crazy. I was not expecting Casablanca to be so much fun. The highlights were the central market, the fish market. Oh yeah. If you come to Casablanca, definitely do that. And then also the little local place to go get the cookies. That guy's shop was just a true hidden gem. The place was packed and everything we have tried has been perfection. So also go to that bakery. That bakery was top notch. How are those cookies? They're so good. Sadly, this is our last video here in Morocco, but I gotta say, this has been one of my favorite countries to date. The Moroccan people were so outgoing and friendly. So many new friends, so many new brothers. We appreciate all you guys. And it was so special to share with my parents as well. So grateful for everyone being so kind. We appreciate all you guys. Thank you for watching. Can't wait to show you what country we're going to next. Is this like the fifth time I've come on camera talking about these cookies? You've eaten like seven since the last time we talked. <laughs> Every time I eat a new one, I'm like, wow. That was the best one. Wow, that was the best one. They're so good. <laughs> Purple cookies, every one of them. Purple cookies. The cookies are so good. I know, I thought we bought too many and we were going to share, but I think I'm about to eat them all. Oh my God. That's so good. <laughs>